Mueller report was great. It could not have been better. It said no obstruction, no collusion. It could not have been better. President Trump yesterday speaking uh, at the Capitol as he was visiting briefly. We also have uh, an update this morning from former FBI Director James Comey last night speaking in Charlotte, saying he's confused by the special counsel's decision to neither charge nor exonerate President Trump on obstruction of justice. The part that's confusing is I can't understand what's going on with the obstruction stuff. Let's try to get some more guidance, if you will, from somebody who knows the law. Shan Wu, former federal prosecutor, D.C.-based lawyer, CNN legal analyst, has worked, among other things, as a liaison to the FBI, the DEA, the Criminal Division of the Executive Office of the U.S. Attorney's Office. He worked under the Attorney General, Janet Reno, so he knows the law. He's tweeting at Shan Lun Wu, at Shan Lun Wu, and is joining us now. Shan Wu, thanks. I appreciate you being here this morning. No, oh, glad to be here. Let, help us understand what exactly is... When the special counsel, because of the way it's written, the law is written, he had to deliver his report to the attorney general, and then the attorney general makes a decision on what to release to Congress and to the public. But in that report, what is his job? Is it to recommend if, for example, there are possible uh, accusations or legal charges to be levied? Would he make that recommendation in that report or not? No, not necessarily. All he's required to do in that report is to tell the attorney general what they have done. So if they did charge anybody, they need to show that, although, of course, that would typically be public already. They need to also talk about the things that they did, documents reviewed or witnesses interviewed. And perhaps, uh, most importantly, they also need to tell the attorney general if there's anything that they wanted to do, but they were stopped from doing. And that's an important aspect of the special part of the special counsel, meaning they want them to have a certain degree of autonomy, not as much as the old independent counsel statute, um, but they want somebody who is a little bit standing apart from the normal DOJ prosecutor situation. And because there's a concern of any bias or impartiality uh, is very important, they want to hear in this report if there was something that they wanted to do, but they're stopped from doing it. How do you find an impartial assessment of a report if you've got an attorney general who's appointed by the president of the United States and a Congress that is in the House uh, led by Democrats who obviously have a certain agenda? So how do you how do you wind up finding that, if you will, uh, impartial or nonpartisan review of a report like that? Uh, yeah, that is, therein lies the problem. <laughs> uh, the idea of the special counsel is to have somebody as impartial as possible looking at this very sensitive matter. They make a report to the AG, and then what the AG does with it, the attorney general, there you may have a problem. Uh, had Sessions remained there, as we already know, he took it upon himself to recuse, I think, properly, because he felt he had potential bias or he might have been a witness, so you had someone less involved in that. Here now we have Attorney General Barr, uh, obviously quite partisan, and my own theory among, you know, shared by some others is that he got that job because of that memo he wrote with his views on the now controversial obstruction issue. So I think that is a problem right now. I think that the Attorney General's summary is very much of a summary. It's very short, and it has a remarkably slim number of actual quotes uh, from the Mueller report. Uh, Shan, when you talk about his his uh, previous being on the record about whether or not a uh, and this is longstanding um, uh, Justice Department policy that you would not indict a sitting president. But he did say uh, in this report that he and the deputy attorney general, Rod Rosenstein, had made the determination that the president did not uh, commit any kind of obstruction of justice actions. Our determination was made without regard to and is not based on the constitutional considerations that surround the indictment and criminal prosecution of a sitting president. My gathering is that you do not find that statement persuasive. Well, that statement may or may not be true. It's very hard to know without any of the context of uh, what Mueller really said. That statement is there. They're taking great pains to point out that this is not a situation, in our opinion, that we would have charged the president, there's enough bad conduct, it rose to the level of a crime, but for the fact that we've got these regulations that say we can't charge them. They want to make sure no one can say that of their assessment. They want to say that on the law, on the evidence, we're not going to charge them with obstruction. The problem, of course, is that the tiny bit... (laughs) that we see of the Mueller report leaves us very confused about that because Mueller actually says that with regard to obstruction, 
the evidence does not exonerate the president. And for Mueller, who I worked with uh, when he was at the U.S. Attorney's Office, is very buttoned up, very by the book. That's an extraordinary statement, actually, coming from him. I mean, it's not quite the level of a James Comey kind of moment, but it's an extraordinary statement. So there has to be a lot of context to that. I, as a former prosecutor, read that, that there was a lot of evidence that did weigh on the side of, of obstruction. And for other reasons, he chose not to conclude what to do about that. I, and to that point, and I, I'm glad you brought up James Comey, I started with a quote from him, and I go back and I thought that that was very, in some ways, Comey-ish in that the special counsel states, and I'm quoting from the, the Barr letter, while this report does not conclude that the president committed a crime, it also does not exonerate him. It's not quite to the level of James Comey calling the uh, the Clinton campaign grossly negligent, but one wonders if it sets the stage for more questions, and if it goes beyond, if you will, the purview of him to make that determination. Again, it has to do with whether or not they should recommend uh, prosecution or not, and, and, and does that do that, and is that straying from the bounds of the special counsel? I don't think it really strays from the bounds, but he certainly was not required to say that, and uh, I think many of us were surprised, uh, including Director Comey, apparently, <laughs> that he said that. And what it really speaks to is that there obviously was evidence on both sides of the matter. And the really big question is why Mueller chooses not to conclude one way or the other. So, for example, if he decided that there was insufficient evidence to charge the president for obstruction, as he appears to have done with regard to conspiracy with Russia, he could have just said that. You know, we've got evidence, we've looked very carefully, and we don't think it rises to that level. Instead, he puts himself out there saying, obviously there is evidence that is very damning to the president. We're not going to make a decision. And what's really important to know is what's the context of that? For example, did he hypothetically say, we're unable to reach a conclusion because we couldn't have a sit-down interview with him and we can't make a decision like that without talking to him. That's one possibility. Or did he really say to Attorney General Barr, you make the decisions above my pay grade? Or did he do none of those and Barr took it upon himself to do that? And those are obviously really important questions we need the answers to. Yeah, the the, the one confusion, and that was the word, I'm confused. That's what uh, Jim Comey had said. But he said, I just can't tell from the letter why Bob Mueller didn't decide these questions when the entire rationale for a special counsel is to make sure the politicals aren't making the key charging decisions. Well, you know, that kind of goes to what he did, right? I mean, James Comey made a decision based on whatever he had in front of him, which left all kinds of political um, helter-skelter in, in its wake afterwards. I mean, I don't think he made friends on either side of the aisle with that. No, that's exactly right. And the, the thing that was shocking about what Comey did was that typically those are announcements made by the prosecutors, meaning by the attorney general, um, not the FBI director. I mean, the FBI functions as an investigative body. They're certainly making investigative decisions. But when it comes to whether you're going to charge or not, that's a prosecutor's decision. And back in the day, there's a lot of stuff going on there. You know, Loretta Lynch may have been feeling conflicted. There's the controversy over the tarmac meeting. But the bottom line is that's not how it's normally done. So to And perhaps this is why it's not normally done. Uh, he did not do a very good job of uh, making that announcement. It was extremely controversial and uh, really, in hindsight, quite clear he should not have done that. Finally, as it goes from here, Shen, we, we see that, of course, Democrats continue to ask for the release of the report. Actually, the president has said, go ahead, release the whole thing. And a lot of Republicans are saying that. Uh, what would keep Rob, uh, William Barr from releasing everything? And what would be right? I heard uh, uh, one representative, Hakeem Jeffries, chair of the Democratic caucus yesterday saying, well, you know, if he has to redact some things for security or whatever, what would be the appropriate information to be released in a report like this? Uh, it, it's subjective. Uh, I come from a tradition of having worked under an actual independent counsel office. I think full transparency is important. The grand jury material, it, it can be released if they were to go to a court and get the order to release it. So I think that should be released. Uh, obviously, classified information is not going to get declassified for this, so there may be aspects of it that remain uh, buttoned up because of that and could only be revealed to Congress behind closed doors, maybe to the intelligence 
committees. But I don't think the grand jury material is, is this enormous bar to it, no pun intended. Uh, and he really should just go to the court and allow that material to come out so people can see the full context. The last thing we want is a report to come out with hundreds and hundreds of blank redacted pages. Yeah, well, I can imagine how much fun that would be to talk about. All right. Shen Wu, thank you for jumping on this morning. I appreciate it. Sure thing. Good to talk to you. Shan Wu, former federal prosecutor, D.C.-based lawyer, his thoughts on the Barr investigation. He's a legal analyst. You've probably seen him on CNN. Uh, used to work for Attorney General Janet Reno. A lot of jobs within the government, outside the government as a liaison, et cetera. So he knows his way in and outside these kinds of issues. Joining us here to talk about the latest on the Mueller report and the Robert, uh, the William Barr letter, uh, he is tweeting at Shanlon Wu at S-H-A-N-L-O-N-W-U.